Speaker, there is a book by conservative author Peter Schweitzer. It's called Do As I Say, Not As I Do, Profiles in Liberal Hypocrisy. I think the advanced education minister ought to have a copy. This week, we find out that while he was slashing his department's budget and forcing post-secondary institutions to do the same, he was loading up on the luxuries. Brand new matching furniture for his political office in Edmonton. He even tried to say it wasn't for him, his staff, but we found out it was for him. To the minister, you are clearly sending the wrong signal. Do you not see the hypocrisy in what you have done? It's interesting that this, uh, this individual would rise on this point. Number one, uh, he, he only made one appointment to my office and didn't show up. But if he actually showed up in my office more often and discussed advanced education, he would get uh, more uh, factual answers on what is actually going on in post-secondary education. But second of all, Mr. Speaker, I have been perfectly clear. Uh, the furniture has been uh, put into the office. We merged two ministries into one. Uh, we have uh, put in additional staff into that office. Yes, some of the furniture was for me, but majority wasn't. And, and uh, we have nothing to apologize for. Governance goes on, and it simply was necessary to do so, just as I'm sure his staff have furniture in their office. Honourable. Ours is second half. Mr. Speaker, I realize the minister is quite sensitive. Perhaps I'll bring him a little bowl of milk tomorrow. This no preamble either. <laughs> Considering this, uh, this minister's short-sighted and paternalistic approach to his file was already driving away professors from the province and post-secondary students uh, reducing spots, how will he justify this self-serving disrespect. Uh, I've asked for no preambles, please, and I meant it, so I'm asking you to shorten yours. Government members, please, cut the interjections. We're, we've, we've tried very hard to elevate everything on all sides of the House. Let's make sure we continue that way. Point of order? Point of clarification? Point of clarification? At the beginning of our questions, that's not a preamble, correct? It would be a wonderful thing if I would have heard it, Honourable Member. So, uh, would uh, Air, uh, Chester Barack of you, would you like to start your question again, please? And Mr. no Speaker, interjections, please. Mr. Speaker, thank you. There are times I admit we all get lengthy in the preamble. I assure you this is not one of them. <laughs> Considering this minister's short-sighted and paternalistic approach to his file was already driving professors out of the province and uh, shrinking the number of spaces available to students, how will he justify this self-serving, disrespectful decision to students, to faculty, and to taxpayers when he sits down at the table with them. Well, Mr. Speaker, uh, as you know, uh, and I know you know very well, during the estimates for this budget, as a matter of fact, this member is on the record advocating further spending cuts into, the, into my ministry. So I find it uh, rather hypocritical for him to be rising at this particular point. But let me also tell you, Mr. Speaker, that today's investment of $50 million in, in advanced education was to address critical volume growth, student growth in our, in our schools. And, and that's exactly what we have done. And we will continue to do that. I did advocate for more cuts, Mr. Speaker, to his own ministry and his own office. There's a difference between wants and needs, and given that Alberta families have to make tough decisions concerning these two things, given that responsible businesses have to make tough decisions concerning this, does the minister recognize that in his role, he should be setting a high standard and not a poor example? Here, here. Mr. Speaker, I, uh, I am very proud of everyone that works in my office. They are nothing but dedicated to advanced education and are putting on extremely work hours. I'm very, very proud of the entire ministry and all our civil servants in our ministry. And as I said earlier, Mr. Speaker, if this member would care to write me the first memo, uh, the first letter, or actually show up in my office to, adv to discuss advanced education, as he is the official critic for advanced education, I would always welcome him with open arms.